Um, be sure to grab some M and M's and take a close look at them. We need our bifocals. <laughs> Did you get some? Oh, yeah. Take another one. Happy 60. Yes. I ate the already jar. I ate them first. And they got Barney on them. Yes. Yeah. I had them. Okay. Okay. Did you see I'm gonna say. Barney, did you stencil these M and M's yourself? Oh, yeah. 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 Barney, did you stencil these M&M's yourself? <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Moment of obsessive compulsive disorder. Okay, so um, those of you who have heard, Mom, you never thought you'd. <laughs> Settle down. So, for those of you who have heard um, a school board campaign speech or a recent wedding toast or a. Horowitz original poetry reading, surely know by now that this is a family of very fine orators. We excel at giving speeches. Yeah, of course, the pressure is really on when you're giving a speech for your father's milestone birthday for the master of public speaking himself. How do you out-charm the most charming person in the room? Oh, sweet. We could take the jokester approach, because after all, we do know Dad is a little goofy. about the good old days, oh, let's do that. the Saturday morning <laughs> cartoons like Pee Wee Herman's Playhouse, and the pancakes oh. shaped in our initials. We also thought <laughs> about making metaphors between Dad and all the cheeses he stocks at the co-op. So, for instance, he's a little bit like Gouda, we think. He's approachable, yet still a little bit off the beaten path. Durable, which is a nicer way of saying stubborn, and excellent when paired with just about anything. <laughs> but in the end, we decided to show our gratitude and love by counting our blessings. Sixty of them. <laughs> Number one. It doesn't get any better than having a dad who knows a little rare known fact about everything, everyone, and everywhere. <laughs> Number two, it doesn't get any better than having dad who schlepped back and forth to the bustling metropolises of Ithaca and Hanover multiple times every semester for eight years. It doesn't get any better than having a dad who encourages you to challenge authority and break a few rules every now and again. Number four. As long as it's not his authority. <laughs> It doesn't get any better than having a dad who supports all of our athletic endeavors, even though it's quite clear that neither of us are Olympians. <laughs> it doesn't get any better than having a dad who is a master in the kitchen and a lover of ancient grains. <laughs> Number six, it doesn't get any better than having a dad who bends over backwards to take care of his family. Until, of course, he throws his back out. <laughs> okay, I think you get the drift. <laughs> Dad, we hold you on a very high pedestal, and we love and admire everything that you are. Your sincerity, your, um, charm. Your, <laughs> your, charm, your sense of humor, and your curiosity. We even love your Hawaiian shirts. <laughs> and Dad, it really doesn't get any better than that. <laughs>
uh, web page. So we have some suggestions for some pages you might add to your blog or web page. Do you know First, what blog is? <laughs> no, I know. No, I don't. I have no idea. I've heard the word. How to accost people in public places, ask them personal questions, and make friends for life. Second, how to avoid being arrested at Yankee games. That's a local joke. Right? Third, tips on being a successful baseball mascot groupie. Co-written with Yupi, the former Montreal Expo mascot. Included on this page is sartorial advice for how to impress big, fuzzy, wildly colored, cuddly things. Including a picture of Barney in his big bird imitation outfit. Third, my life at the NLRB. 30 years in the belly of the beast. Fourth, National Labor Relations Board versus College of St. Rose Faculty Association. The secret story of the attempt to end wage slavery in the United States. <laughs> Next, where to drink Irish coffee with your local rabbi in Cork. <laughs> Next, how to pour the perfect pint of Guinness. And finally, how to run a campaign to overthrow entrenched school boards. Yes. Yeah. Really, I mean, I'm a very lucky guy. 
I grew up you know, in Mount Vernon with wonderful parents. It's kind of emotional. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a long, it's a long time ago. And those days, if you didn't have something, you didn't know you didn't have it. And it was wonderful. We had milk and devil dogs every afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Life was so much simpler back then. It was great. We grew up, my brother and I. We had a wonderful household. I fell into, I stumbled into, well, my mother was always very good at picking out bargains. So where could I get a, a, an Ivy League education for $300 a year yeah. at the ILR school at Cornell? I didn't know what it was. That's you know, what did I know? That's <laughs> okay. But anyway, so I went off there. Uh, 1970. Yeah, it was a wonderful. I mean, it was a very unusual time and place. The late 60s, of course. 60. Uh, 60. It was, you know, it was somewhat anxiety provoking for the older generation, but we we enjoyed ourselves in many respects. Uh, times were changing, and I, in 1971, the unmuzzled ox. I met Lenny, the woman who shared the next 40 years with me. It's kind of tough to do this, you know, to summarize. But um, she's been exa exasperated with me, but she doesn't give up. Yesterday <laughs> evening, <she's, laughs> yesterday, this is a true story. She what said, uh, I'm still going to work. I'm going to try to retrain you. <laughs> I forgot to, you know, I got to, I've got new carpets. i got to learn how to you gotta wipe your feet. <laughs> but, but, but I love her, and we've had a great relationship. Wonderful kids. And I'll, I'll reprise a line I said at the uh, Shana's wedding that all the women in this family showed the good sense. They married Cornell men. So, <laughs> <laughs> and I tell you, you know, it's been a nice trip. I got nice in laws out of it. Bryn and Mrs. Pooh is here, Doug. Known them for 40 plus years. Uh, kids, again, are wonderful. They married wonderful guys, wonderful friends. So what do I have to complain about? Nothing. So, I don't complain. Keep going. <laughs> but, yeah. Anyway, so thank you very much for coming. And uh, we have dessert, I understand. I'm looking forward to seeing what's on the cake. And uh, hopefully we'll go to other 60s, 70s, whatever, you know. I'm, uh, I'm game. <laughs> Lynn, so. Coffee on. Coffee's and ready, yeah. So hot water. Minute, we didn't hear from you about how did you straighten them out yet? <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> I just need a few more years. <laughs> it's a work in progress. <laughs> That's right, it's a work in progress. He's That's showing good. signs That's of improvement. That's He's showing, showing signs. That's very challenging. <laughs> yeah. canceled twice, he still made it down to Washington. And there's one thing I can say, that I got the President's greetings, he did not. <laughs> yeah, but you're a little older, so come on, give him a chance. Plus the Senators and our Congressmen and all that. In fact, we have the President's greetings here somewhere. That was a special birthday down there in D.C. Yeah. That was yeah. a, uh, two in one year. <laughs> yeah. special birthday. If it had been President Bush, he would have sent me his greetings. <laughs> 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 they would have been a lot less valuable. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got those. Uh, <laughs> but we can second that Barney is really a good organizer. He really is. And Tom put together some to Florida. fabulous trip to Florida. Oh, that was good. Can he navigate? We must have taught him how to read maps at a very young age. He is a fabulous navigator. He said, he said, you 
must have taught him how to read maps at a very young age. Oh, yes, they have, right, that's true. Yeah. I had maps yeah. of the world and maps of this country. <laughs> <laughs> He's particularly good at saying, we should have taken that exit. We should have taken that exit. He's a fabulous navigator, and he reads maps really well, but he has one little tiny flaw. He prefers to talk rather than read the map. Sorry. He tells great stories. He's very quick like his father in space. He moves very quickly. I was kind of a retiring young young man, young boy, right? Wasn't I? Kind of quiet. And quiet and sharp. Very quiet. Oh, I know what the teacher had said. I was discussing something, and I said, "It's interesting that you said that because he received a report card one year, and he was, I think, a fourth grade, and he said, Barney is very analytical, but he should remember to bring a handkerchief." <laughs>